Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Paul, I'm with a Dicey Review, and today we're going to learn to play the two to four player game Grifter's Nexus from Indie Boards and Cards. Grifter's Nexus comes with all of the components that you see here, including 75 ISK tokens, 28 job cards, 66 total specialist cards, and four player tableaus. To begin setup, place the appropriate number of ISK tokens in the center of the play area. The number of ISK tokens that you place will be different based on the player count. We're going to be setting up for a four player game, and in a four player game you leave all 75 tokens in the middle. In a three player game you would remove 10 and put them in the box, and in a two player game you would remove 25 of these tokens and put them back in the box. Next, players need to prepare what the game calls the job nexus. Players start by taking the level 4 job cards, shuffling them, and randomly selecting three. Lay these cards face up in the table to start forming the display in the middle. Next, find the level 3 job cards, shuffle them, and select 4. Lay these level 3 cards on top of the level 4 cards. Then shuffle and randomly select 5 of the level 2 cards. Form a new line on the top row with the level 2 cards. Finally, shuffle and randomly select 6 level 1 cards. Once you've done this, you'll have an inverted pyramid as you can see here. And it's important to note that in a two-player game, you'll place one less card in each row of the pyramid. Next, give each player a tableau, one of each of the three ring leader cards, the pickpocket, mastermind, and thief, and three ISK tokens for each player as well. Any player components that aren't used can be placed back in the box. Finally, shuffle all of the remaining specialist cards and deal three to each player. This will complete their starting hand. After dealing each player three more specialist cards from the specialist deck, place the specialist deck face down near the play area, and you're ready to play. The player that's most recently committed a legal infraction, no matter how minor, is the start player and gets to go first. After that, players will take their turns in clockwise order until a game end condition is met. When that happens, the game's going to end immediately. Each player's turn will consist of three phases. The first phase is the advance time phase. This phase is skipped in the first round, but we'll look at what happens just so that you know what to expect. During gameplay, in phase two, players will play specialists onto the night one space of their player tableau to take actions. During the advance time phase, any cards that are on night one, two, or three of the player's tableau move one space to the right. This ensures that Knight 1 is always available to have cards played there. If any card or team of cards is in the Knight 3 space, they will shift over to the refresh space of the player tableau. Cards that are in the refresh space of the player tableau will come back into your hand during a later phase. After a player has completed the advanced time phase on their turn, the next phase of their turn is the play specialists phase. Each turn, the active player has to play a specialist from their hand to do one of two things. The first thing a player can do during this phase is what the game calls performing a caper. To perform a caper, a player simply plays one of the cards from their hand into the night one space and resolves the text on the card. Each card will have different types of special abilities that can be resolved. This card, for instance, says steal two ISK from the coffers. So to resolve this action, the player would simply take two tokens from the supply and place them in their player area. After doing this, the player's play specialist phase of their turn would be done. The other option that a player has during the play specialist's phase is to complete a job. Job cards are displayed in the inverted pyramid in the middle of the table. Players can only complete job cards that are fully visible. At the start of the game, the top row of job cards are the only jobs that are available to complete. But as job cards are completed and removed during gameplay, new job cards will become visible, allowing them to be completed as well. Each job card has a number of skill requirements to complete this job. The three different skill types are Brain, Brawn, and Speed. To complete a job, a player has to discard specialists from their hand onto the Night 1 space of their player tableau that have the skill types matching the requirements on the job card. They would announce which job card they want to claim, discard the matching cards that the job requires, and they could then claim the job card. 
It's also important to note that each job card has a leader requirement. For instance, this job card requires that the players play a leader with the brain skill. So let's say, for instance, that a player wanted to claim the lift banking blueprints job. They would declare that they want to claim the job. They would place specialists that have the required skills as a group onto the night one space of their player tableau. And they would also place a specialist that has the required leader ability on top of their stack. A card that's played on top of a team is the leader of that team. Since this player has discarded cards to night one with the required skill types and played a leader with the required ability on top of their team, they would then get to claim the job from the display and place it near their playing area. Completed jobs will potentially give players end game points. But in addition to claiming the job card, whichever card is played as a leader also gets to resolve their card text ability. So for instance, after claiming this job, the player would then be able to resolve the mastermind's ability, drawing three specialists and choosing one to keep from the specialist deck. After a player has advanced time on their turn and played a specialist or a team of specialists to take one of the available actions, they would then move on to phase three of their turn, the refresh phase. During the refresh phase, a player simply takes any cards that are in the refresh space of their player tableau and returns them to their hand. After this is done, it's then the next player's turn. Now that we've looked at all three steps of a turn, let's take one full example turn so you can see how it works in real time. The first phase of this player's turn would be to advance time. This player would move each card one space to the right, and the card in Knight 3 moves to the refresh space. Then it's phase 2 of this player's turn, the play specialists phase. This player decides to complete a job. The player declares that they will complete this job. After declaring which job they want to complete, the player would discard a team of specialists with the required symbols and with the correct leader on top. Since the player has played the required specialists, the player would complete the job claiming the card. In addition to claiming the card, the player would now be able to resolve the leader's special ability. The mastermind allows a player to draw three specialist cards, choose one to keep, and discard the other two. The player decides to keep the private eye and discard the other two cards. After this phase is complete, the player would complete the refresh phase by taking this card and putting it back in their hand. Their turn is now complete, and play would move to the next player in clockwise direction. Play will continue in this way until one of the end game conditions has been met. The game will end immediately if any of the following conditions are met. The last ISK token is taken from the coffers, all jobs have been completed, or if there are no specialist cards left in the deck or the discard pile. At the end of the game, players will score points for a number of different things. The first thing players will score points for are for sets of completed jobs with the same color type. If a player has completed two jobs of the same color, they will receive a two ISK bonus at the end of the game. If players have completed three of the same color type, they'll receive a four ISK bonus. If players have completed four jobs of the same color type, they will gain an eight ISK bonus. And for each card that a player has collected above four of a particular set, they will gain four bonus ISK. It's also important to note that there are some cards that are wild. They can be added to any color to complete or enhance a set. Players will also score points for any of the ISK tokens that they've collected throughout the game. Whoever has the most total ISK after adding their bonus for their completed sets and counting the tokens they've collected throughout the game will be the winner. If there's a tie, the player with the most completed jobs is the winner. If there's still a tie, the player with the fewest specialists, including any specialists in their hand, hideout, and refresh area is the winner. Now that we've looked at how to play the game, I do want to highlight a couple of card abilities. It's important to note that some cards in the game will allow you to steal money from a player's stash. For instance, if an opponent had played this card onto their night one space, they could select to steal two ISK from this player's stash. It's also important to note that there are some cards that allow players to launder money. Whenever a card says to launder money, the player will take the laundered amount from the general supply and place it on the card. For instance, this card says to launder one ISK plus one ISK per player. In a four-player game, you would place this amount of money on the card. When players are choosing to steal from another player, they can either choose to steal from their stash or from laundered funds that are on any cards 
and the tableau. It's important to note that as the card moves through the player tableau, the laundered funds will stay on the card. If a card with any laundered money is collected back into the player's hand, the laundered money is removed from the game. It's also important to note that there are some cards with an abduct ability. When a card is abducted, it's taken from an opponent and added to your hand or tableau. It is important to note, however, that ringleaders can never be abducted. All right, everyone, that was our video. Thanks so much for watching. We hope that it was helpful and we hope that it was informative. If you still have any questions about how to play the game, please comment below or email us directly at thediceyreview at gmail.com. If you want to hear more from the Dicey Review, you can listen to our Dicey Review podcast. It can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, Tuned In, SoundCloud, pretty much any podcasting app. You can read our written reviews at thediceyreview.com and make sure and connect with us on social media or at our Board Game Geek Guild. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, we'll see you at the table.